Very excited to see these two teams play against each other. It's going to be an interesting game on the rift. Uh, who do you think is the clear favorite for this matchup? Oh, for Team Unga Bunga and Short and Jian Lu, I'm going to I'm going to give the edge to Short and Jian Lu. As long as they keep it together and um, they don't throw their gold lead, I think I think Short and Jian Lu can take it to the moon. You know. Which player are we watching out for for popping off per se? For that particular team, I definitely say we have to look at the mid lane. Madre the Flame is the captain, and he is a feast or famine player. This guy, when go when he gets going, really, really gets going. Um, but that doesn't mean that the rest of his team doesn't pop off. It's truly they truly live up to their meme. These apes are strong together. Oh, this is gonna be an excellent match to watch uh, for. But you have to give it to the other team too. They have the one of the highest ranks in this tournament coming in. Right. Nikhil is Nikhil is a bit rusty. He hasn't played League quite as often after Summer Lull. But man, is this guy scary. His mid lane presence is one to look out for. And um, Fook up in the top lane plays a very mean, aggressive Camille, Darius, Fiora, and Chogoff. That guy is also a solid rock. And um, with that top half top half of the map, King of Conquest has a lot of room to play around. Interesting. And how do you think about the supports? Which support in the support matchup? No one really talks about the supports, really. It's all about the carries, the ABCs, the mid laners, even the carry junglers. But the supports are usually less loved. How do you see the uh, supports playing off each other? As a member of the support union, you gotta you gotta love the supports. Games live and die by the supports. I really think Oni-chan has grown immensely over these past two weeks. Um, after watching these scrims, you gotta say he is a force to reckon with. He's like a silent killer. You know, he sets really? up and preps people. Um, yeah, like, I don't even know. I can't, I'm trying to make a joke with the name Oni-chan, but, you know, he's like that silent big brother figure from that's looking, looking out for you from beyond. Awesome. What about the, on the other team? How is uh, the other sports place out like? How is uh, Cherry Boba? Oh, Cherry Boba is a mean Thresh player. This guy has some great hooks with initiations. He also has a mean Blitzcrank, um, which are very much in meta currently. Mm. And any, I was just curious, any, uh, any dirty Yumi pickers we have to watch out for in this tournament? I, I'm going to say, I think Oni-chan does have a mean Yumi. He Ooh. has a mean Yumi and Seraphine and Soraka. So, uh, hate to say it, but they are, he, he is a mean, he is a dirty Yumi picker. Um, on the other side, Team Bongo, Bongo Feet in Group A are renowned Yumi pickers. Uh, that is why they are Team Bongo Feet. They are cat lovers all around in that team. Damn. That's a very interesting and loving team to bond around as their mascots. So it looks like we're about to get into the rift soon. Just a few more moments, everyone. It's going to be a very exciting game to cast. I'm very excited to watch this, you know? Oh, for sure, Nelson. Uh, I think this is going to be an explosive game that we're about to witness. And this and we're will live. be live stage with the draft stage between Team King of Conquest and Team Cherry Boba, or... Um, Team Unga Bunga versus um, Shorting Jian Lu. All right, so go. what do you see about the band? The first band I see is a singed band, uh, JP Morgan, and is a notorious singed one trick. So that has been taken away. So is Kaisa Madre. The Flame loves using his um, Kaisa to charge in and be able to do things. On the other hand, how about the how about the Red side bans. Oh, well. A great ban of Kha'Zix onto King of Conquest, hitting his champion pool, and two targeted bans toward their great mid laner, Nikhil. That Zeref and Zed ban is really going to tighten Nikhil's belt, um, really limiting him the amount of champions that he can play. But as he called it, Nelson, a quick Yumi pick for Oni There it is. On Oni Chan wants that good KDA right there. 0 0 18. That's what he's aiming for. Yeah, really supporting his little siblings up 
as a club. It's really like the counter here with Leona saying, okay, if you're trying to just stay back and play safe, we're just going to go all in on you right now. Yeah, which is why this bot lane is going to be really interesting to watch. Um, Madre and Cherry Boba are very aggressive, while Snowy Summer and Oni Chan are all about farming it up and supporting their team in for those team fights. Um, but we have a rapid pick and ban phase right now. Both teams know exactly what they want to pick. Both teams have a really good, uh, really good draft so far. I really like the bot lane with the Ezreal Yumi playing, trying to play super safe to, to their play style, while the other teams drafting the Graves and strong carry jungler, and Leona tries to support up and the Seraphim too. Look for that good wombo combo. That's right, Nelson. Um, team shorting Jian Lu looking really great for those mid game team fights. We have a lot of great initiation and follow up with that Seraphine ult, that Leona ult, um, and Lucian to butter people up with his cuddling. This is looking to be a strong team fight. Oh, and with an Orin pick, they are very well rounded out. Very excited for this both sides teams. Both both teams have a clear definition of how they want to proceed and win this game. Uh, with the Leona, Orn, Seraphine, they just want to basically team fight, wombo combo off each other's picks, basically. While on the other side, we're looking for scaling. You have the Vigar, you have the Choga, each trying to get stacks, basically, each trying to scale. It's going to be on the Pantheon to keep them in this early game, basically, and not follow behind. Bot lane's oh. very, very self support with the Ezra and Yumi, too. And, and for sure, King of Conquest is is great at securing early game leads for his team, and Pantheon is his champion that's going to let him do that. This guy is going to do great map-wide plays, roaming, um, assassination picks. We might even see him invade Ducky's jungle, so be on the lookout for that. Paul, is there anything that you want to point out for us? Well, well... Before we uh, go into any of these cases, we do we have, first um we have a message from our title sponsor, Dropod. Dropod is a Williams alumni founded social uh, media and gaming startup centered around making it easier to connect with friends to play online multiplayer games. One part gaming community and one part social media app. Dropod just launched and is in open beta. Dropod hopes that the Williams network will be a major part of its community. So go check them out in App Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Thanks for the sponsored message, Paul. Yeah, guys, definitely if you get a chance, do try out Drop Pod. They've been really generous to um, sponsor us this tournament, helping us out, really reaching in deep. They're a Williams College bread and butter. Yes, on that note, we will be playing our little advertisement right now. All right, how, okay, so since you guys talked about how the band picks would go, can you guys run me through about each lane matchup, each, um, what the end goal or what the competition wants to do? Well, for sure, Paul, we're looking at a lot of scaling on Team Unga Bunga with Choga, Vagar, um, really hoping to get some time to ramp up and um, so we're expecting King of Conquest to really spend a lot of his time on that top side, which which means they pick the perfect bot lane to do that. Ezreal Yumi is going to do a great job picking out and um, sniping CS from a really, really safe distance. They got a lot of sustain coming up from Onichan on Yumi. 
they will be a very, very safe bot lane. On the other hand, uh, shorting Jian Lu has a pretty safe mid laner. Uh, Seraphine does a great job of pushing in Vagar, constantly, constantly having him farm under his turret. Um, while Lucian and Leona are going to be very up in Ezreal and Yumi's face, they're going to be constantly trying to invade, trying trying to start those 2vt skirmishes and possibly convert those into kills. We're going to expect Ducky to coordinate with Cherry Boba and Madre the Flame for some turret dives during laning phase. Um, so we should expect to see some of those happening. Um, awesome. Okay, right, welcome back, Nelson. Hope you hope you found your way out of that cave. Yes, I did find my way out of that cave, and I'm back, ready to spect or broadcast this game. Um, as you basically said, uh, one side's trying to scale, another one's trying to team fight. Very in the very early mid game. So, as so, we get to the rift here, uh, I am very ex oh we we have a issue with the title. Uh, uh, yeah. th this is not the trees in the park. This is unfortunately not. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, apologies. I was in in uh some shoes that will get fixed is shortly. Okay. Oh, we got pause on the rift right here. We're expecting a lot out of Paul, so uh, we're, we're very thankful for all the last-minute preparations that he and Ben Bowie have been able to do for us. Uh, ben Bowie is participating in the tournament as BZK, so uh, one of our cast broadcasting team's finest is representing us in this tournament. I want to give a big shout-out and big thanks to all these players trying to play this, you know, taking their time out of their Saturday, and uh, even the people who, who are helping in the background, like Ben Bowie, to just set up this tournament. It's a really big, uh, really just big shout out to you guys and thank you. You know, without yeah, this, this tournament can't be. help without every single one of you spending, um, giving up your time on this weekend to come out and play these games. So thank you, participants. Y'all don't get as much love as y'all should. Awesome. And we're just sitting here um, during this pause. And I kind of wish that they had a chrono break in uh, just normal games. You know, you know how many times you just play a game and then you just, you ever see a bugging in this game? If you play this game long enough, you might find yourself finding a bug or two. You know? I think one of my favorite ones was when I was playing Lucian and I got knocked up like super high in the air by a Cho'Gath uh, Q. Or was it the one of the rupture, basically? But, just, but then it was like a follow-up by another knock-up. So it's like I flew off the screen and I Did didn't fall back, back down. Did you come back down eventually? Like took seven seconds and then the whole team's like question part mark pinging me and then i got killed i was like well not much to do there you know you kind of just laugh about it but or you can just rage at riot awesome. but it's up to you um my particular bug favorite bug in the history of league of legends was definitely the robot amumu laugh um back back in the old day robot amumu's laughter could be heard all around the map and it was a global pressure and force to reckon with um Really Do you remember that one bug where the, like, I forget how, but the jungler would always just be on, like, no matter if you went into Fog of War or not, you can see the enemy jungler permanently. i almost positive I was in a game with someone here where that happened. I, I, I don't remember that bug in particular. I do know Asol had an issue with Fog of War before, but... Mm. All right, let's... Let's stop talking about bugs and let's talk, start talking about this game right now. Yeah, so we're back. We're in. We're loaded in. The game is game is starting. Um, do you, are we expecting any level one invades? It I want to like say we are. yes. Seraphine's level one is fantastic. Where her giant AOE snare, um, and they have some great follow up with Leona and Orin. Really like the spotlight engage, but. They get spot out by the sword by Yumi. Really good on Oni China. Will, will they try to do a counter? Oh nope. Red trinket brought by Graves. Oh, nope. But so, that uh, that ward does give precious experience to this team, which the team might be able to use to get an advantage. 
do they get the second ward? Uh, unfortunately not. And Nikhil runs away with with an eight. Two stacks stack. on Vigar. Yeah, two stacks probably on Vigar. And a uh, little bit of, uh, if you took the mana band, plus 25 mana. So I would be happy with that early game. Yeah, that's probably team. a happy Vigar looping around in mid lane. So aside from that exciting level one invade, um, we see Team Unga Bunga starting off in on on their red, while Ducky is actually starting off on his red. So we're expecting Ducky to come bot lane for his level three gank, while King of Conquest will be going for that top scuttle. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what would happen. Is uh, Pantheon's gonna be going to Krugs right now? Looks like he's going to try to do a full clear, while Graves is also going to go to his Krugs after red buff start. I wonder if he's going to gank uh, the Cho'Gath at level 2. Right now we're watching just uh, the bot lane. Modred the Flame and Cherry Boba seem to have taken control of this lane right now. Very good little poke back and forth right here. Mm -hmm. Not Omnitron much you can do doing as a level great job until... coming out, poking people with the auto attack, getting back mana, getting his shield. Um really showcasing his familiarity with Yumi. You know, a lot of Yumi's like to just stay on their ADC and never come out, but Oni Chen knows. It's a little aggressive from Roger the Flame. He knows he has to do something. He can't let this bot lane just sit back and just farm. So he's trying, Roger the Flame is looking just to, for every little trade, every little try engagement, just to try and win this bot lane and not let the Ezreal and Yumi just do their thing of just doing nothing and farming. But on the other side, Nikhil really showcasing his prowess in the mid lane, pushing in Cole on Seraphine. Um, I want to say... really like the W by Orn to cancel the rupture because you're unstoppable while you're doing that flaming breath of Orn. A um, little bit of trade yeah. back and forth. So JP Morgan has spent this past two weeks really practicing on other champions aside from Singe because he was expecting... Um, a ban or two, as we had seen during this phase. So, doing a great job drawing out pressure. and But Fook, oof, really, really punishing him with this Cho'Gaf. Cho'Gaf in a great state right now. Probably one of the best top laners in the game currently. I'm kind of curious, what do you think about these summoner spells? These summoner choices? Vigar without TP, taking the cleanse. For the Leona and the Seraphine. But oh my lord, look at this. Very oh, good Cherry job by Bobo Cherry Bobo to work in the and the oh, loop around. They make it the first blood. They, does much, they do get that first blood. Wow. You know, for for someone with that giant grill hunter arm, Leona is one sneaky lady. This. Yumi, Yumi doesn't know oh, what's happening right here. They're going to for this. Going for that turret drive. They're going to give, give back to Cherry Bubba because... No one could uh, get the kill. And Cherry Bobo with a double kill. Well, I want to give a really big shout out to Cherry Bobo right now. Using the, uh, what's it called, the Nook in bot lane uh, that they added. Just to walk around, in the, using the Fog of War to get a pick onto Ezreal. And catching him out of guard. And then oh, Graves yeah. was there in the right place in the right time to pick up the, secure the kill on the Yumi. Fantastic mastery of the vision. Oh, in we got Yorn, Yorn here just doing some really good trades. Go, gets the kill onto Fook right get there. Fook. Oh man, Orn doing a great job. You know, JP Morgan it looked like he was getting he was getting a bit abused, but he turned that right around, really showcasing why he's a solid rock up in that top lane. Oh yeah, this is a very 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 good solo kill on the Orn. As soon as uh, I think the Cho'Gath missed the rupture, Orn just smelled blood and went for the kill right there. Very, very, very good solo kill. And now we're back in the lane. Ezreal comes back with a tear, while uh, Lucian comes back with a 1300, uh, how was it called? With a, a quick, noon, uh, quiver. Yeah. noon quiver. Yeah. This bot lane. Oh, but the Leona roams. You see? Oh, and a beautiful uh, Leona Boba. roam by Cherry Boba. But does King of Conquest have his mid laner? Oh, but it looks like... Oh, and the Graves comes, and they're going to give the oh kill to Graves. Oh my gosh, and Cole played that beautifully, landing skill shot after skill shot, and poke after poke. He and Cherry Boba were in sync, and those two 
And now we still have some action at the point? No. Some See, everyone, harmony. Cherry, Cherry Bob was just surprising me within these first six minutes right there. As soon as you back, like every support watching this right now, if you back in bot lane both together and this ADC runs back to bot lane, just run through mid as a support. Just run down mid, look for a pick, look what Cherry Bob would did, then come join your ADC. You don't always have to come back down through bot lane. Just go through mid lane if you back on your first back as a support. And that's what happened here with Cherry Boba. Very good mechanic, or very good macro mechanics on his part. Very right good now, macro on the, this the rift right now. I think they're buying up a little more. They can shoot right here, trying to start the dragon. Now again, chased off. Very oh, low health. Madre is health. looping around, and there is but a teleport. The is this Seraphine or Geon? Uh, this is JP Morgan and. And it seems and... like uh, Blue Side's going to concede this right here. The Lucian secures it, and Orn doesn't have flash to follow up with that knock up. And they're just going to give the uh, give dragon away, but at what cost? Cho'Gath's on in the top lane just farming. So farm for Cho'Gath, and it's a dragon secured for red side. But I mean, this is what red team wants. A team shorting Jiang Lu really want to get those early dragons to convert into a soul, so that they can close out, force, um, force the Un team Unga Bunga into into those later dragon fights, um, where where uh, shorting Jiang's Lu really um, excel. This is a team made for team fighting, and they want their opponents to participate. And you have to understand, blue side's not out of the uh, blue side's not out of this game yet. You know, if we go into this draft, we can easily say that yes, Red Side picked the er, the stronger early to mid game game right now. But if blue blue team is able to scale up, oof, I would not want to fight a uh, very very fed or very very stacked up Cho'Gath or a Vigar. Oh, most definitely not. Nikhil can really pump out the damage, play his outplay button, and delete any of these squishies on this map. Um, we do not want to get into very very late game so now, uh, as we're watching bot lane right now uh lucian set up a freeze in bot lane and luckily it's ezreal so ezreal can kind of farm with range with his cues but it's, it's not looking good right now for blue side this is not where you want the wave to be at if you're an ezreal yumi frozen right there and i think they're looking for six uh magic the flame six so i think leona's going to turn six soon and as soon as he hits six he's looking for that engage now we're getting to, oh, oh I, probably a little bit of a misplay of without a, a key right there. Between Fook and JP Morgan. Orn doesn't alt right now, so I think Fook can just Ducky walk away. Oh, the Ducky's right there. But King of Conquest is and there Chaos as well. Away. No, they're just giving it to uh, the Graves. And, uh, and Ducky is able to catch they gonna use... King of Conquest off on the oh, side. Oh, ult, uses ult. But... Thanks to that Vagar cage, King of Conquest is able to walk away safely. It looks like they're um, going for the blue steel, the blue steel right now, and Pantheon just wants to get the uh, wolves. So very good play by uh, Red Side, find the pick onto Cho'Gath, catching him out of position without flash, and this bot lane right here, Magic the Flame has full control, freezing the wave with a 30 CS lead too. Hiding menacingly, menacingly in that bush, really, really waiting patiently for her prey yeah huge cs lead by magic the flame this is just incredible seeing how they just dominate bot lane now we're watching dunk ducky just catch out fook right here but just goes for a little trade backs off and but looks fook like he's gonna start rift tailed can't really come out for to catch that wave without fear of ducky coming in for another gank he unfortunately will also have to lose out on some experience and farm against that freeze. So as you see, as you see any new support players, watch this. Lucian's coming back down lane, and uh, Leona's just running down mid lane right now. It looks like he wants to fight and contest this uh, pantheon. No, he's just yep. He's and just Cherry Boba, but Cherry Boba being there got the vision on pantheon. They know he's down in this riverside bush, and you it's know, like a gentleman's it, agreement basically right now. He's just there just to see if they engage onto yep, Seraphine. And he's keeping now, seeing Orn just go aggressive onto this. Uh, very, oh my god, oh the Orn W to cancel. A the beautiful, here comes, unstoppable here by comes Dunky. JP Morgan. JP Morgan's man. tanking the tower, but uh, they don't have enough damage right now to. Uh, can Fu oh, get it? Oh. <laughs> oh my god, JP Morgan. Insane one, insane. Uh, right, just winning the one v one by by inches, or I, I guess it's a one v two because Ducky was around the corner and he oh, did. The oh, but King of Conquest lane. coming in with Pantheon ult. 
just trying to save the tower right here, basically. They got a couple plates in regards, but to use a Pantheon ult just to stop that is, isn't what we're looking for in this Pantheon. You know, he's... Right, the early game is plays of aggression from King of Conquest, but there just isn't many lanes for him or opportunities for him to gain currently. Um, shorting Jian Lu is doing a great job of freezing the lane on their side, really really bleeding out Team Unga Bunga. So now, now if you look at the game state as a whole, what do we have? We have uh, Orin have one level advantage over the Cho'Gath right now. Mid lane's about even. I would say that Nikhil has a slight edge in the mid lane, but still, mid lane's all about just wave clear, wave clear, wave clear. The Pantheon ha has more farm than the Graves. The Graves has more presence in the, all the side lanes, mostly ganking top and even helping gain a kill in bot lane right there and securing Rift Herald and uh, Dragon. So just sacrificing the farm for his team's presence in the early game is huge for this Graves. And if we just look in the bot lane, the bot lane's just 30 CS advantage on the Lucian. The Lucian even having the Kraken Slayer right now. Uh, it's just, it's the early game is definitely going in favor for red side right now. And watching right now, I think the dragon's spawning in uh dragon spawn right now, so it looks like they might try to look for a dragon. Pushing the wave in, trying to push the wave in hard because Ezreal has a very, very bad wave clear under tower. Um, I just want to give so a shout out for Ducky, who is who is traditionally a support main. He has had to learn jungle. Oh, uh, but Fook is looking to TP in, but he gets caught out because JP Morgan is watching, basically, and then JP Morgan just jumps onto the Cho'Gath right now, and meanwhile, in the dragon a side, they're looking to onto fight. Nikhil, but a fight Two back to back right across now. the map. Catching Nikhil out, giving the kill to Seraphine right now. Seraphine, then great, Ducky's finding the Ezreal Yumi, and then Pantheon just... I think he W'd to the... But Madre, they fled, loops but around, he takes flash, flies in, he climbs in, in, and he goes in the, for the Ezreal kill on Snowing Ezreal, but he's coming, he's coming. Oh my god, and Marjorie the flame dodges the Yumi kill with the flash going! Incredible. And then it's Cherry Boba stuns, and oh my god, it, they pick up the kill. And a clean ace. skirmishes by Marjorie the flame. the flame. Marjorie the flame. Marjorie the flame. As I said, this guy is a face or a family player, really putting the team on his back. I, I mean, don't overall, know they did. Your own pills he's taken. I don't know what Marjorie the flame was doping with before watching this game, or just before even coming into this game, but my god, flashing in as Lucian into th two players, or three players three with the players. on him, and then just barely making out uh, with his life. If you just watch that last clip, him do using the blast coming, dodging the Yumi Q, which would have killed him. The, oh my god, the sheer testosterone, the audacity. I imagine the flame to know the limits of his champion and just go in like that, balls just that deep. Is incredible, this, honestly. This is certainly an exciting game to watch. Both play, both teams putting on a clinic. Oh, it's it's been a great mechanical feat all around. And you have to give a shout out. Oh, what, but before oh, I even King talk Conquest, right now, King Conquest is looking to gank too. top lane, but and Do he walks they, away. Can they dive Orn? No. I just wanted to say um, the Orn stopping the Cho'Gath from teleporting because Cho'Gath was looking. To uh, come in and help with that dragon fight, but Orn recognized was, it, and then he caught him in the bush. With a great knock up in that bush. And 1v1 the Chogath and just killed him, you know? Right now, it's it's not looking good for blue side right now. 10-0. Um, if I was red side, I'd be feeling really, really good right now. Um, we and can't count much... the game out just yet. No, we cannot um... count the game out just yet. We've seen games more monkey or less monkeyable than this still get turned around. These teams are in it oh, and they do we'll not see or an alt, easily. Or an alt to the Cho'Gath, cues the Cho'Gath, and Ducky comes on the side. Ducky and comes like off on the side. He's just there just to see, just to uh, make sure Cho'Gath doesn't get out. And and they're just I wonder who they're going to give the kill to. They're going to give the, the kill turret. to the jungler, and it's just an easy pickup right there. So, yeah, props again. Ducky's doing a great job, really being all around this map. Oh, and the Lucian just solo ults down. Uh, now, but watch this though. Pantheon and Viger are roaming together to bot lane. Pantheon might alt, and yep, oh. Pantheon's gonna alt and try to kill the Lucian. Pantheon it's gonna be big. Ults, they try to go in for this Lucian. Uh, Onitron trying to no keep his ADC oh, safe. Gets one for one, but, oh. but that's over, I would say. Uh, that's uh, 450 gold to the Pantheon right there. So, granted, it was a one-for-one -one trade, but more gold went to 
more gold went to the blue side than the red Bunga, side. Right? And they also get that assist gold. Very mm. crucial. Oh, but Cherry Boba might have caught Nikhil off in this roam. Oh, but he Cherry Boba doesn't even care, honestly. He has his team backed up right there. They're they're super far in the lead. And it looks like Nikhil might be caught out here. He has no flash, no storms, but he just waddles away. And now they're looking for the tier two right here. Pushing in. Putting his seed. Cherry Bobo's trapped in there. Oh, Beautiful but he takes the Beautiful Seraphine ult by away. Cole. Oh, oh and an execute and, by Seraphine. No one execute. touched him. And then Seraphine ends up killing the Vigar somehow. Wow. So, just making sure, is this this is an Ocean Soul game, right? Now we're on to the phase of the game. 16 minutes in. It's before Baron. So there's no Baron you can take and try to push in to end the game. And all the first tier towers are gone. So if I was blue side, this is the time for a comeback, basically. Because red side is going to be basically ex uh, extended to those tier twos. And it's easier for blue side to rotate and look for picks. Just like what happened with the pan uh, Lucian and bot side. Uh, than it is for red side to come and support. But granted, red side does have double teleport up right now. So it's very... It's still... I wouldn't say it's throwable, but um, Blue Side does have a, uh, they do have a little ray of hope to come back in if uh, if uh, Red Team slips up right here, going for one of these tier two towers. But it looks like Dunkey is going to try to secure the Rift Herald and then uh, bust either top or mid lane with the Rift Herald right before Dragon spawns. I would also like to see Team uh, Shorting Geo and Lou finally take that outer bot lane turret. We see Cole making his way down there, pushing that wave in. Hopefully, they'll transition that to that third ocean soul. Oh, but looks team. like Cho'Gath's caught out up here, and looks like the Lucian a level above Andre, the solo lane. Cho'Gath coming in flashes, with Cherry Boba. But, Cherry Boba gets uh, a beautiful But looks like a little ult. miscommunication on. Uh, Leona and Lucian are right there because Leona or Lucian backed off for farm and Leona thought they were still going to go fight, but it's not a big deal. If we look at items right here, uh, the item advantage is huge on red side. Uh, but before we can talk about items, the dragons are spawning and blue side blue realizes side they need these dragons to catch the setup. graves out. A grave slashes away, and but this isn't good. They're caught up in a pinch right here. Blue side has to back off right here, and but Orn sees this and Orn engages. Hits and they the go Ezreal. into Nikhil. Oh, Flash again, beautiful three people ult off. by this is Cole. What, this this is what guy on Seraphine is dangerous. This is exactly what Red Side wanted. Orn ult followed by, followed by Flash. Uh, Seraphine ult followed by Leona ult. There's nothing you can do with the Rift Herald in the mid lane. It's a third dragon secured by Red Side. And tier two secured too. It's just, oof. This is this is one of those games where you just have to mentally reset afterwards. You know. You know, team shorting Jian Lu is like the game stock, the GameStop stock. They are meaning about. These guys are on the up and up. Yes. And now this will be an easy secure uh, by Ser Seraphine Leon on the bot tier tower. And there's just, you know, if there's not much really to do, you know, they need to look for picks with the Vigor or the Pantheon. And they did. They almost got picked off the graves with the Vigor cage. But right, then Graves Flash recognized they, this and flashed away. But it was just, everyone was a little too far away. If if Pantheon was right next to that Vigor so he could have a follow-up stun, perhaps they could have translated that into a kill. But as they are, they're just... And to all you want to be clash players, not want to be, but if you're just you want you have a team of five players and you want to do clash together in like two weeks or so, look at red side's picks. Oh, but before we even uh, talk about that, looks like Fook wants Fook, to give uh, Orna a taste of his own medicine. Securing that buff, starting to little down JP the, Morgan in, uh, JP forcing, Morgan, forcing that the flash, Orn flash, and Orn waddles away. Yeah, but hurt, this is but not broken. This is what I want to talk about because if you just want to start a game. Uh, if you have a team of five players and you want to do a clash, and you you want to know how, what to draft. Look what Red Side has. Red Side has very, very, very good, like CC follow up champions. You know, you have good or you have Orn ult with Seraphine ult, followed by Leona ult. It's just each one of those three champions can make a pick, and then each one of those three champions can follow up 
with whatever Orn does or Seraphine does or Leona does. But if we look on blue side right there, as we saw with the Cho'Gath, like finding the Orn out, he couldn't really do much. You know, he's just chasing them down using the slows from his uh, mythic item, but there wasn't a good follow up. Uh, the he just needed something else. So, very good draft by Red Side. And looks like Red Side's just going to uh, looping around to find King of Conquest right in his jungle. And there's not much you can do right there. Oh, a little bit of the Orn all just just safe to be sorry, and they're just going to secure the Baron right here. Right. It was. You know, they had expended a lot of ults, but they just really wanted to make sure they were sending all of their investments into killing uh, King of Conquest to prevent any Baron steals. Honestly, it's about sending a message. You know, it's like, we're so strong right now that I can just throw an Orn out ult out right here, and it doesn't even matter if it doesn't hit anyone. So you secure the Baron at 21 minutes in. There are three dragons in, and it looks like if I was red side, I would just probably either, if you want to play it safe, just group up down mid lane, get an inhib, and then secure the final dragon. Or they could just look for a team fight and end the game. And it's just this big boy Orn right here is <laughs> level 13 to this Ezreal level 10. There's not much he can do, and Ezreal doesn't have a mythic item completed yet. He has a Muramana, but he's not going to be even even able to just do any damage to the Thorn Mail Sunfire Cape Orn. So. And now, just looking on this rift right here, it's so uh, we hit a little lull state. Um, yep, it's as just... shorting Jianlu is resetting, but you know, Nelson, is there anything that Unga Bunga can do to turn this game around? It's hard to say. They need good ward coverage. Um, looking at this game. Um, both sides, they, they need more pinks, basically. I know, I understand they're very, very poor, but in order to come back from this game, they need to get some of the shutdown down gold. Like, Orn has 300, Graves has 550, Seraphine has 400, Lucian has 200, 300. They just need one pick just to crawl back from this 1300 uh, gold deficit 24 minutes. You know, they just need, but super hard, honestly, because they don't have the vision. And But right now, look at this. They're going to do something cheeky, but I don't think that was what you should have done as a Yumi just to reveal yourself from the bush with the Q. But now this is what, uh, now we're just watching the Baron Siege. And we just gotta watch, you know, we, we gotta see who's gonna start off the fight. The Orn ult's gonna start the fall. Ooh, ult. a nice poke by Nikhil onto Madre the Flame, softening him up for possibly a collect. So we got Dragon spawning in 15 seconds. It looks like Red Sight's just gonna give no, they still want to keep going with this push. They're using Seraphine to poke. It's not really much of a siege comp, to be honest. They both Lucian and Graves are very short ranged. The only thing and they they're looping back around for that ocean soul. Yeah. This are yeah. they gonna attempt a steal by Team Unga Bunga? No, they're not. They're just gonna give it. Watching right here, they give the ocean soul away. And now, if I was red side, I'd feel more confident diving this tier 2. You have Ocean Soul, you have a really good regen. I don't think there's any healing reduction on, uh, except Bramble Vest on Cho'Gath for this Ocean Soul. So, it looks like uh, they're playing it slow, honestly, which is fine. They have a good lead, and they just want to... Just, oh, but they look for the pick, and they pick... They good, oh, but oh, but do any Ducky damage. has a... <laughs> Quick wow. puts over Sash. <laughs> I didn't even see him pick that up. Really learning from the that. The sheer magic resistance. I've never seen a Viger ult do that little damage, but the sheer magic resistance from Murtreads and uh, Quicksilver literally made Viger ult do 15% of Graves', Graves uh, health. I don't even think Graves realized, like, oh, but watching here, they're going to use the Orn ult. They're, they they're do go in for Vigar. that dive, and, and JP Morgan Vigar, picks and up the kill. But Cole also them. looping around. Oh, but the Lucian and Graves are, like, wrapping around. They don't have this damage support, but they're just so, so but far ahead. But they're just so ahead. In. And they just that they're, look for the they're kill. They're taking this turret for 2,000 years. And, and that's it... all she wrote right there, Anna. It looks like they're just going to run down bot lane, kill the tower, run through mid lane, kill those two, uh, or not just kill the Nexus towers and end the game. Okay, Very one-sided be... game. 
Team Jeon, shorting Jeon Lu, really, really putting on a strong early performance. Oh, uh, but they don't have the minions right oh. here. Oh, the flash. Oh, oh, I called it too early. Cherry Boba going into the bottom of the ninth, very, very far into that enemy base, but you know, they, they just weren't able to capitalize. They didn't have the minions. They didn't have the does, minions or Baron Buff to keep does pushing through. Back away. Oof. Wow. Very exciting last three minutes right there. Um, yeah. It's just, even when Graves and Lucian were not there in that little fight, um, they can't, it's just, who can, you can't. Even under or, turret, JP yeah. Morgan and just is too tanky and he just it's ate just, that turret damage like it's it just, was. just the gold gold just it's just there's too much gold difference honestly so i wouldn't say skill it's just the stats you know a lot of a lot of league of legends is just a stat check you know uh seeing who has the bit more damage or who has the faster attack speed and or more health or higher level and just looking across the board two level one level difference in top lane two level difference in the jungle one level difference in mid lane three level di difference on the adc and uh yeah, Just... and with a 15,000 gold gap, with evenly distributed almost every single counterpart, about 3k ahead between Unga Bunga and Shorting Jian Lee, this, this game does look a bit grim, Nelson. And it's just, it's just amazing, too, because a lot of other players who would have this gold lead would just be doing what Madre the Flame, oh, but they catch a pick on the Pantheon right there. Oh, but and Pantheon shrugging off that damage. That's a lot of ults out. No, but they still have Seraphine and Ornult right here. But they don't have the Baron to push this wave in. They, they're using the uh, Viger and Ezreal to try to clear this wave. And Pantheon on the front line with Yumi just to block some of the damage. <laughs> and then the orange just makes an item. <laughs> makes Doesn't an item care. in front of them. He's like, how dare you interrupt me? And then just goes and Ocean Soul doing in work because they just don't have any damage to kill this beefy Orn right here. And now they're just going to walk to the Baron right now. Oh, with oh, the Seraphine and a ult. Seraphine ult. Oh, but it looks like Blue Side realizes this. and or are they going to try to stop the Baron? No, they're not. And Red Team just takes the Baron. You know, team I, I really want to say how... Uh, really taking their time, making sure they they end this game cleanly. Yes, it's just amazing because any other team, if we're in probably what, is this the LPL bracket or LCK bracket? This is the LPL bracket, you oh, know, I'm despite what we're seeing. Living up to the their name because I would expect more of them to be like Madre the Flame flashing in, you know, trying to do tricky plays. I mean, he did in that, he did, he did in that red fight, but... But this, the sheer mental, like... Whoever's the shot caller in this team is very, very good to keep his players in line because he's like, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this all as one. And he's like, you are not like flashing in, doing tricky stuff or whatever. It's just yeah, very, it's like, so very, much. very, like, slow pace. This team is a bit of a democracy. They um, they take turns, they communicate, and they they kind of discuss about when to go in and when and not it's very, to. It's very, like, they're, they're not, the, the one of the things I like about this team is they're not letting the other team, like, play off their mistakes. They're very just, like, pushing the lanes. Oh, yeah, they're very controlled together. and tempered. Um, and Kat they and just catch the and... Shogath and Vigar. Like I said, the team comp is just basically one person lands CC and then just follow up, you know? And now there's oh this, they get the seraphine but it doesn't matter because they pick off the U oh now they're looking and they, for more and they and they keep want. going for it you know they after after we complimented their control and their patience but they just the, but they know it's three dead, Gian, four, five, yeah and uh, going that. in for their victory lap killing the last I think Ezreal's hurting himself more turret. just hitting the Baron or hitting the Orn than doing damage to him they they might kill. Madre the Flame? Nope. Oh, and they secure that Nexus. We get a GG and a win for shorting Jian Lu. Yeah. Very good game from uh, Red Side right there. Just they... How would you describe it? Was it more of a win lane win game or was it just basically off of picks? You know, skirmish, skirmishes, you know, they picked up the, those I kills. Wanna, I, I want to credit the win this time around to Ducky and Cherry Boba. Cherry Boba having that fantastic early... Oh, mm -hmm. first off, he did that 
beautiful sneaky sneaky play using the new alcoves in the bot lane mm -hmm. and um hiding in that bush where yumi did not expect him that was a fantastic play by him and then the follow-up immediately after roaming to mid lane after when his adc backed um, catching the kill off guard getting that early advantage to cole that was also very beautiful we saw ducky visiting but all three lanes constantly throughout this early game. Um, really, I think those two were the standout players for this game. I really want to just give a big shout out to the top laner in this game, JP Morgan. And like he played a tank carry top laner like no one's business. You know, he had clear understanding of the lane. He what surprised me was he either saw Chogath go into fog of war or he stopped. Cho'Gath from teleporting into that dragon fight. And even Solo killed him. You know, he had very, very good control in the top lane. But then Cho I, I don't know who to give a uh, player of the game to, you know? Uh, because yeah, we had it's either Cherry Boba or JP Morgan and all around. And the major, major the, I don't know. Someone has to go back and just literally uh, clip what M Madre the Flame did. But as an ADC, in, as in a that, Lucian, Oh, yeah. In, in oh. that uh, enemy <laughs> red side, he did... It, you know, that is the kind of play that Madre is known for. He plays on the knife's edge. You know, if he had done that and he had died, that would have been disastrous for his team. But he did it. It's it's going into the play that, reel. That's going into his reel montage, sure. honestly. Yeah, that's going is. into his montage. Because it was just it's a very just, I'm going as an ADC moving in. Um, but let's see here. Oh, oh, we also get reports. Uh, Team B, no, Group B had both their matches finished. Um, Voidless versus Riot C Max ended shortly as well, uh, just uh, just recently, and um, it was Team Voidless who had took the win over Riot uh, over Shrimp Gang. So um, wow, interesting turn of events right there. Yeah, so you know, Group B really really pulling out. Uh, showcasing their LPL nickname. These are very, very fast games all around. Okay, uh, when are we coming back? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, All right, okay. and we'll be right back. Um, you'll see our hear our beautiful voices in just a short, short while as we go on this little break. Are we? Are we good now? 